811 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels. Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and welcome to the Bentley Mulzahn Speed. The last true Bentley on the road before everything got Volkswagened up. Last week we talked about how to optimize your driving for fuel economy, and today we're driving a 530 horsepower, 6,000 pound Luxo barge designed for the most opulent of the upper class. The Mulzahn is a completely bespoke chassis, so it does not share any real parts with any Volkswagen or Audi products, and it still retains the six and three quarter liter twin turbo V8. Don't call it a 6.8 liter because it's not. In 2016, this Mulzahn Speed cost $397,000 when new. And I'll tell you, when you drive it, you feel every penny. This is the last year before the facelift, and that's easy to tell because we've got the droopy dog fog lights. And if you want to see the upgraded version, it's just up basically level with the headlights. It looks a little cheerier, but I think this is a little more quintessentially British. The stance of the Mulzahn is insane. It's incredibly long, and this isn't even the extended wheelbase version of the car. We've got 21-inch wheels wrapped in 265-millimeter rubber, and that is not enough because this produces 811 pound-feet of torque. That's 1,100 newton-meters of torque going only to the rear wheels. And although it doesn't have an entirely glass roof or anything crazy fancy like that, this sunroof is enormous. This is a really large piece of glass and for any other vehicle that would probably cover most of the roof but in this ridiculously large British Grand Touring luxury beast it's just a normal sunroof. Now before I show off this insane interior we're going to open the door we've got knurled door handles just like the Azure that we've driven in the past and let's open up this hood to show you this insane and classic power plant. We've got to reach in behind our Bentley B emblem with the wings. And there she is. You can actually see something under here, which is nice. And unlike the Volkswagenized Bentleys of today, there's the engine. It ensures that you know it's a six and three quarter liter twin turbo V8 and not simply a 6.8 that they've rounded up. And it tells you that it was built by a man named Bob. This particular engine means a lot to the Bentley and Rolls Royce fans because this can be traced back for decades. It's always seeing improvements and this should be, I think, the most efficient version of the engine. So because it's a Bentley, if we're gonna start in the interior, we might as well start in the rear. Back here, We've got our plush carpets. We've got a tray table that descends with the touch of a button. And because this has the exclusive option, we've got a button on the side here as well, which will reveal what should be our iPad. Now you can see where you could put your iPad in. You basically have it charging and then you could use your iPad keyboard here. We also have TVs in the headrest. And of course, if you wanna see what I look like, here is the mirror. This is great because then you know that you're not gonna have any troubles bringing someone to an event a little bit late. They'll have just enough time to do their makeup and the suspension is on air so they won't be jolted too much and hopefully will not damage their eyes with their eyeliner pencils. But there's little cubbies and compartments everywhere and our HVAC system of course has the classic Bentley style with these aluminum vents and then of course the pull push close of each vent. Under here, we've got our remote and a cigarette lighter, or probably a cigar lighter if we're talking Bentley, but that's fine. I'm a non-smoker. And then an ashtray down here that you can pop out. So that way I assume you can just remove it and dump it somewhere more clean. The rear seats are of course incredibly comfortable, but they get more comfortable because they are adjustable. So when we pull down our armrest, it's more than simply an armrest. Under here, we've got room for our Bentley specific headphones. So that way, if you are watching something on the television here, you do have your Bentley headphones to watch with. And if we slide this panel back, that's where we reveal our seat massagers, our seat adjustments, and of course you can move the passenger seat forward for your leisure and leg room. HVAC controls in here as well. And although this was not equipped with the refrigerator, there would be a wine refrigerator with glasses under here. 
This does, however, have reasonable cup holders for your convenience. There's even seat memory buttons for the rear. Soft closed doors, as you'd expect. At the rear, we've got these monster exhaust pipes, which are real, but also not because there is a small exhaust dump down here. I assume maybe that's just valved, but it's a Bentley, not a Rolls Royce, which means it's a driver's car. So let's jump in and take it for a ride. The driver is greeted with leather everywhere. It's kind of an odd smattering of materials though, because we've got leather, the beautiful deviated stitching, piano black, not everybody's favorite, and then this sort of two-tone leather with this tan, which I think suits the car brilliantly, and I absolutely love the stitching on the headrest with the Bentley emblem. And being the old school Bentley, we have proper gauges, our fuel gauge, our clock, and our water temperature, and to my great pleasure, analog, tack, and speedo. Oh, and don't forget the carbon fiber on the doors. That's the stuff. To start the Bentley, this engine start stop button is sort of hidden down here, foot on the brake. The classic rumble of the six and three quarter liter V8. I love it. It idles nice and low, just over 500 RPM. And remember, this thing is a torque monster. It revs out like a diesel. Its red line is indicated at 4,500 RPM. This is not a high revving engine. But for your navigation, we hit this button and then out pops our screen, which is lovely that you can hide that literally with the touch of a button. Everyone who sees this gauge cluster immediately thinks they're counterclockwise or anti-clockwise gauges, but they actually go clockwise. It's just that zero starts up here instead of down here. So it looks a little funny. It's a little more work to interpret. Put it in drive, very simple, parking brake off, and we are good. Now this is all about just wafting along on waves of torque. It's interesting when you have 530 horsepower and 811 pound-feet of torque, it gives you an idea of the character with those numbers. This eight-speed ZF does wonders for this power plant. I read somewhere recently that someone praised Bentley for masking the weight, masking the heft of this Mulzahn, and I couldn't think of a crazier statement. The first thing you notice when you pull out in the Mulzahn is how enormous it is. It definitely prides itself on this weight. It is not shy about its weight at all. I mean, geez, that's wild. I can't believe how capable this is in a straight line. Because of the mass of this car, I'm actually optimistic for the future of Bentley. It would be wild if they could combine this engine with a plug-in hybrid system, because can you imagine the regenerative braking energy you could capture with a car of this mass? Let's see how she does from a dig. 811 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels. It tries its hardest to put it down, and I've gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with this traction control system. Despite slipping and having to kind of delay itself, it still managed to get itself out there. If I tried to do that with traction off and a manual gearbox, I'm sure I would have spun second and third and maybe fourth. It's pretty good, it's pretty good. And remember, this can do zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. It doesn't have to. If it was an all-wheel drive system, I think this thing might actually scare people in a straight line, but that's not what it's designed to do. Oh, it's just incredible how much torque there is when you get into the, you just dip into the power, that boost builds up, and there it is. It's May 2022 right now. Gas prices for premium in Massachusetts are about $5.19 per gallon. 
I'm getting 11.2 miles per gallon right now driving this way. However, on the way home from where I picked this car up, on the highway, about 30 to 40 miles, I managed to get 23 miles, all right, 22.7 miles per gallon. I'm exaggerating. 22.7 miles per gallon. That's really impressive. But like I said, if you could maybe combine this with a mild hybrid system or a uh, plug-in hybrid system where you could get it to run on electric power like a RAV4 Prime and get 20 or 30 miles pure electric, this would be insane, especially every time you get off throttle, recovering the power and charging a battery with 6,000 pounds of Bentley. Oh, how efficient could you get? We could actually start making these green. I must say though, I love driving this on sort of country roads. The steering is heavy. It's like surprisingly heavy. When you get into a Rolls Royce Phantom, and I know I'm not giving you the most relatable experiences, but it's what we got here. You get into a Rolls Royce Phantom, it's a giant thin wheel, it feels very dainty, you can kind of grab it with one finger and just tell it where to go. This car, you do have to kind of grab it by the scruff and you've gotta tell it where you want it to be. I believe that's supposed to be sporty for them. It's, it's something that makes it feel more like a driver's car, like you're really putting in the effort. I could do with that being just a bit lighter. But what's just so remarkable is this air suspension. Look, we're gonna go up over these tracks. And that's in sport mode. That's not even in comfort. So it still absorbs most of it. But man, it's just so special the way this thing goes down the road. And it's funny because while the Phantom feels a bit disconnected, you do feel like you have to really think and use your eyes to make sure that you're actually going where you're intending to go. This car still feels like a car. It still has kind of a tactile and visceral feel. You know, you definitely know what's going on. Oh yes. It feels like you've got to take pretty wide turns. You don't want to clip that rear wheel on a curb. So you're just going to be a little bit thoughtful while you're driving it. And I find myself really familiar on backcountry roads and in, in, in these types of rural areas. Although I would imagine that a lot of folks who own these cars do live in major cities. And I could not even fathom having to park this in a tight parking garage, let alone a European tight car parking garage. There's a big difference between a tight parking garage in America and a tight parking garage in the UK. Let's see how it handles an on-ramp. It handles exactly how you expect it to handle. There's a bit of understeer, but it's balanced. I don't feel scared, I don't feel intimidated, and it gives me all the feedback I need through the wheel to know, ah, you might be pushing just a little harder than you should be. But the wave of torque that just comes on on throttle is insane, and it's a beautiful thing. So, now that we're out on the highway, let's talk about what it's really designed for. GT cruising in luxury comfort. We'll go back to comfort mode, jump over here, pass a car, and we'll try to recuperate some of this fuel economy. We're down to 13.1, and I would like to not have spent a day's wages filling this car up. This is comfort, this is nice. And I'm not so insulated that I feel like I'm in a sensory deprivation chamber. There's definitely road noise. I can definitely hear the engine note when I get into the pedal a bit but everything's just muted. It's just dulled down just a bit. Everyone's using the left lane incorrectly, and I will just waft by them in British luxury. 77 miles per hour, just adding a hint of throttle. We're at about 16, 1700 RPM. It's just chugging along happily. It's not even wasting any breath. This is just no effort to keep this thing moving at highway speed. That's the beauty of this engine.
soaks up the bumps nicely. No nasty rattles or anything. This hand-built luxury monster from Crew is holding its own after 32,000 miles. The most important thing about this car is that it cannot be found anywhere else. This is not a reskinned Audi A8 with extra leather and carbon fiber and, and, and knurled aluminum knobs to make you feel special. This is a real Bentley. It has a real Bentley engine, it has a real Bentley chassis, and it has a real Bentley suspension. This is an end of an era, and I hope we don't lose this completely because it is absolutely glorious. And I would love to be able for this experience to continue on for years and years to come. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if this type of car survives. However, we've got motorcycle police behind. We are gonna let them go. We don't wanna mess with them. But this Mulsanne Speed, despite being a 2016, I know there's newer models with a facelift, but this car might be the peak of real Bentley tech. This might be it. Everything is based on a Volkswagen chassis. You're getting a Bentayga. It's an Audi SQ7 with extra stuff. And sure, you can get a W12 in it, and that's wonderful, and they're fun to drive, but you can feel the underpinnings. This is the real stuff. This is the good stuff. All the torque in the world to make this pass. Doesn't even downshift. Doesn't even downshift. Doesn't need to. Oh, this is great. Well, unsurprisingly, I'm going to need to go fill up with some fuel. So thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I hope you appreciate the Mulsanne for being the, the purest, most Bentley Bentley of modern times, because this is pretty incredible that it still exists and you can buy this today. If you have $400,000, I don't, go get yourself one of these if you can burn the cash. Man, this is the way to go. This is way cooler than an S-Class. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mercedes, but this is the thing. <laughs> That's so cool. That is so cool the way this thing just gets up and goes. Element making some dicey moves here. We're going to be a little more ginger with our Bentley. Who's going to run the yellow? Everyone? No one? All right, half of you. Cool. Glad I waited. Well, I'm going to pull in here and get a pretty ugly reality check of why I don't own this thing. Thanks for watching, don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. 5.15, yikes. I miss my Honda. Just realized I have seat coolers down here. That's the stuff. I should have seat coolers. This car costs too much money not to have air-conditioned seats. Oh, that's oh, that's good. That's good. This means that you can daily drive your mills on. You can go to the gym, decide that you'd rather shower in your beautiful shower in your mansion rather than the communal showers at a country club. Gross. And get in here and not sweat up your seats because you can put on your glorious seat air conditioner. That made-up fantasy is how you can tell. I'm not rich.